on page 259. Okay. 
member of that youth group. Thank you, Molly, for all that. Oh, we, oh, we can meet after church for that. It'd be great to see that family. <coughs> uh, prayer request, remember, uh, let's remember Cleve. Uh, I said he's uh, got COVID, so let's remember Cleve and how lower in that. Um, remember all those, remember Bill and Joanne, Frank, all those battling cancer and all of our shut-ins that aren't with us. Continue to remember them in your prayer. Any others? I don't want to leave anybody out. All right, we'll go to our birthday. Today is Frank Hurd. Yeah. Birthday, happy birthday, Frank and Kenny Stewart. Yeah. Birthday. Yeah. Tony Martin, December the 1st. Uh, Wednesday the 2nd, Sarah Hurd and Amber Smith. Any birthdays I've missed? Any of our visitors have a birthday this week? Nobody? All right, we'll go back to our anniversaries on the 27th. Troll and June Martin. He's already up. And this Friday the 4th, Matt and Melanie Martin. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is a big one. Yeah. How many did? 56. 56. We got 25. Y'all sing loud. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary.
Monsieur le Premier. Hein.
is going to stand this morning, Brother Scott. God, we pray, uh, Lord, that uh, you might, uh, uh, God, just stand it, God, and I pray that, uh, Lord, uh, in his mind, uh, uh, Lord, he'll be able to receive it, uh, and then, God, uh, uh, give it out to us this morning, Lord, that we might have it, and we might be able, in it, Lord, to use it next week, Lord, and use it in our life. God, we pray this morning, Lord, for those that's lost loved ones, God, we know, Lord, there's a lot of sadness today. And, Lord, I thought about that too, Lord. Uh, uh, this morning, Lord, uh, uh, heaven took on a new meaning, Lord, to a lot of people, God, when you begin to lose your loved ones. Lord, heaven's a little bit sweeter, uh, God, for us today. And, Lord, we pray, God, just continue to go with us through this service. Lord, if there's somebody here that don't know you in forgiveness of sin, God, we pray, Lord, there'd be some way and somehow, God, you'd deal with their hearts, and Lord, they'd be obedient. God, and come to an altar and repent and believe. Lord, for these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Will, for the good, humble prayer. Got your Bibles and we're going to follow along. We'll first be in the 139th Psalm. Psalms 139. If you want to turn with us there. And Psalms 44. Thankful for Sunday school and I'm thankful for my Sunday school teacher. Got the best one that I've ever had, and really enjoy uh, sitting under his teaching. And as I, we, he, he, he always um, tries to follow the Lord. He, he, he teaches in the Word and prays about that, and, and the Lord directed him into the Book of Psalms. And we've started in the first chapter, the first verse. I believe it was last Sunday. We started in the Book of Psalms, and. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. And when I sit under his teaching this morning, I begin to realize or begin to think about how that when you sit under the teaching of the Word of God, how it uh, stirs your thoughts and it begins to cause you to examine yourself. And that's what I'm thankful for. As I sit under the teaching of the Word of God and in Psalm, it, uh, there it begins to speak about uh, wisdom and, 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 and in the very beginning of Psalm it says for the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And I'm very thankful to God this morning for the stirring uh, of our hearts and our minds as we hear His Word. And I realize today it's a living Word. It's like no other. It's, it doesn't compare with uh, the newspaper or some kind of magazine or some a novel, a book of any kind. It is, it is a sense alone and it is the living Word of God and there's nothing that compares to it. And, uh, I'm thankful for it this morning. But if you want to look with us in the book of uh, Psalm in the 139th chapter, we're going to start reading in the 13th verse. And as we open God's Word and you uh, led us to a place uh, there in the book of Ruth about uh, uh, there a young lady that uh, we've uh, been able to uh, uh, look to many times in God's Word. We began to read there in the book of Ruth and about uh, there when uh, we, we know how that the uh, uh, hard times had fell upon Naomi and uh, her two daughter-in-laws and one was Ruth and how that they had uh, had to go out and seek uh, for their provisions that they might have food and how that God uh, provided for them and led them in a the place that they needed to be that He might provide and feed them and how that Ruth, when she went out, her mother-in-law sent her out to glean in the field. Uh, uh, Boaz had, uh, uh, allowed them to come out and glean in the field and how that uh, Ruth had went out to glean that first day, and when she came back to her mother-in-law to bring back that that she gleaned, the Bible uh, shows us there that her mother-in-law uh, saw uh, the uh, the amount of 
of goods that she had and she was amazed and she began to question Ruth and said, Who hath thou wrought with or where hath thou wrought this day? <laughs> she yeah. was amazed at the work that had been done and that word wrought is what I want uh, to try to uh, uh, speak to you a little bit about uh, this morning, the Lord being her helper, she said, Where hast thou wrought this day? And the Bible tells us that Ruth began to tell her uh, what had taken place and begin to share with her. And she, she explained it like this. She said, We have wrought together. And she was speaking about Boaz and herself, how they had wrought together. It was a great work that had been uh, worked together. And how we want to read now the 13th verse of the book of uh, Psalms and it reads like this. For thou hast possessed my range. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Now won't you listen very closely. Thou hast uh, possessed my range. And this is the, uh, of the psalmist speaking to God and about God that he has possessed his range, that he has controlled him, that he has power over him to direct him in his past. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. There uh, we realize today uh, that life begins at conception and that uh, a, 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 a baby, an unborn child there in their mother's womb is, is alive within itself and it is recognized by God. And, uh, it is life. And how did the psalmist here said, even in my mother's womb, you have uh, covered me, you have protected me, and you have provided for me, you have been mindful of me there in my mother's womb. And if God is mindful of the unborn child in the mother's womb, so shall we be. Uh, just as mindful as God there. And the Bible said, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I want you all to realize today uh, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. There has been a great work of God that has been wrought in you. I thought about that word wrought. Now, uh, one of the things that came to my mind that I began to see when I uh, thought about this word wrought, I began to see the railings. Oh, uh, when you begin to enter the house of God, there are railings up of the steps. And if you ever uh, notice up the handicap ramp, there are railings there. And these railings are made of iron or steel. And these, uh, this steel, these railings are called wrought iron. That means uh, they have been uh, shaped into place. That's the way they got the way that they are. That they've been shaped into place. Now, I thought about also, and y'all just bear with me, I've never got good at this and don't know, but I'm going to do the best I can with it. I, I thought about it as we looked up the word wrong. Uh, it gives several definitions. And, uh, one is to be hammered into shape. Now, uh, listen, I'm a young man that stands before you this morning that is very thankful for ever uh, whooping I got as a boy. Uh, there was a lot of times that I had to be hammered into shape. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm thankful uh, for all those hammers uh, uh, that was put upon me uh, as I was growing up. Uh, uh, to take my uh, uh, listen, get me in shape. Uh, uh, get me to the form uh, uh, that I needed to be in. Uh, uh, get me to the place uh, uh, that I might be helpful uh, and useful. Uh, I am good to somebody. Uh, uh, but most of all, uh, uh, for the working of the Lord, uh, I thought about this broad iron railing uh, that's on this uh, entrance to the house of the Lord uh, that is there for 
God. And I want you to think with us. Oh, listen, still is much stronger. Oh, when, it's, when it is heated uh, to a certain degree, this has to take place uh, for it to be shaped in the way that it needs to be shaped. I thought about it. Uh, uh, the Bible speaks about Solomon's temple and how oh, when he began uh, to get everything, David began to get everything in order uh, that it might be built and all the artificers and all the, uh, those great workers of steel uh, there and the minerals, all of them, uh, the very best was gathered together uh, that the work might be done and it might be beautiful and it might be as perfect as they could possibly get it. Uh, he rounded up all the best all those that were good uh, that it might be uh, that the work might be worked and that the job might be uh, might, uh, might be done uh, there it was how they worked and they began to work uh, there for the temple of the Lord I'm thankful today to listen uh, the, uh, there, uh, there's many different types of work that is work over the house of the Lord so are uh, very tender things steel and iron is something that's very hard it has to go through the heat it has to be uh, beaten it has to be hammered to be shaped but then there's uh, tender things there's art and then there's all uh, types of uh, skills uh, there that uh, uh, some consist of a very uh, very tender touch and a very uh, fine touch something that needs to be handled very gently that it might not be damaged so that it might not oh, listen be, oh, be ruined but it, it, it might oh, be very tenderly a work that it might turn out to be oh, the beautiful work that it's intended to be I'm, I'm thankful today oh, listen the 139 psalm here said we have been oh, wonderfully oh, made we have been beautifully and wonderfully made listen God oh, he has all knowledge and all wisdom and oh, listen he has made us in a way uh, that is perfect in his eyes and has been pleasing unto him. Uh, some parts, listen, had to be very tenderly uh, touched and very gently uh, handled, and in some parts uh, had to be hammered on a little bit harder. But God's work is perfect, and he uh, knows how to do the work uh, that he does for his honor and glory, for the upbuilding of his kingdom. He, the Bible said here. And we're fearfully and wonderfully made uh, with all knowledge and all wisdom. Oh, there we've been made and we've uh, been designed by Him. And oh, listen today, oh, you are a beautiful work. Oh, you are a work of the hands of the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, the Most High, uh, the greatest of all. Oh, listen today, uh, uh, you have been uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, there it says here. Uh, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. The works of the Lord are marvelous. <laughs> uh, they're above all other works. They're beyond, way beyond the works and the ability of man uh, are the marvelous works of God. Uh, the psalmist said, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and in curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Listen, <laughs> curiously wrong, uh, curiously born. Oh, listen today. Through all the knowledge of man and through all the searchings of mankind, oh, listen, all the ways of God cannot be found. <laughs> uh, they are far beyond, above and beyond uh, the ability and knowledge and mind of man. <laughs> oh, they can search for now <laughs> uh, but they'll never be able to find uh, the very depths of the Curiously, a wrong work of God. It is beyond what we can comprehend. Oh, listen today. Oh, listen in the very depths we were formed in the most secret place. Oh, listen today. In the very innermost part of the womb. Oh, listen was you formed. Oh, there from the very, uh, the very depths, the most secret place. Oh, listen to what that is today. That is at the very point of consent. Uh, that is the, as far as you can go uh, with your existence. That is as deep and as far. That is the very center, the very core of your existence. His conception. Uh, uh, that is the most secret, uh, the deepest place.
asleep. That perfectly a work, a wonderful work, a wrong uh, that becomes, uh, uh, listen, a human being uh, uh, formed for the glory and honor of God. And that's how you've been made today. Uh, from conception, the very uh, deepest, uh, the most secret place. Uh, uh, he began to form you and make you. Uh, uh, listen, I want to encourage you this morning. Uh, one thing uh, I love about my haircut is I don't have to look in the mirror as often as some others may. I don't have to wonder if the wind has blown my hair out of place. Uh, some of you think uh, this is a curse. Uh, I want to tell you it can be a blessing. Uh, uh, listen, I don't have to look at myself uh, uh, maybe as often as others. Uh, uh, but I want you to understand today. Uh, listen, uh, uh, when you look in the mirror at yourself, uh, I want you to know something today. You have been wonderfully and fearfully made uh, from conception. Uh, uh, God intended on you being here. Uh, God had a hand in it. And not only a hand in it, uh, listen, you are the wrong work of God in the head. You are His perfect work. Oh, listen, you be careful uh, when you look at others. Uh, you be careful to judge. Uh, you be careful uh, there because God, oh, listen, He has formed us all. And I'm thankful today, very, very thankful. We don't all look exactly the same. Oh, wouldn't, oh, wouldn't that be rough if everybody looked like me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you. You do have something to be thankful for, don't you? Oh, let's all lift your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, listen today. I want to tell you something. I want you to know and understand that you are a work of God. And He loves you. And He has made you in a beautiful way today. And you're perfect in His eyes and in the way that He has created you. Oh, I'm thankful today. As we look here, and we, we mentioned about Ruth and about how uh, there, uh, our mother-in-law, when she got back and she saw, oh, uh, listen, uh, what she had possessed, what she had uh, come home with, there, uh, the goods that she had possessed. Uh, uh, she didn't expect to see uh, such a blessing. She didn't expect to see uh, such a measure uh, there within her uh, daughter-in-law's arms. Uh, and it amazed her. Uh, she began to wonder uh, where it come from. <laughs> oh, listen today. Oh, I want you to know today. Uh, she said, uh, who wrote this great work? Uh, Boaz is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, that's who he represents uh, uh, in, this, in this part of Scripture. Uh, and listen, it's basically like this. Uh, uh, Ruth said, I have been with the Lord. Uh, uh, that's who wrote this great work in me. Uh, I've spent some time with the Lord. Uh, I've spent some time with the Master. Uh, uh, something beautiful. Uh, uh, Oh, when she got in that field uh, and began to glean, uh, oh, the Bible said, and Boaz looked out, uh, and he, uh, he began to take notice of her. Uh, uh, he began to question, uh, uh, who is this? Uh, he began to search out uh, and find out who she was. Uh, I'm thankful today. Oh, uh, listen, uh, uh, that the Lord is looking over his field. Uh, uh, he sees you there. Uh, you don't go unnoticed. Uh, uh, you are. Uh, you are cared about. Uh, there is one. Uh, the owner of the field. Uh, the owner of all things. I uh, love what Billy mentioned last week. Uh, he said uh, uh, he owns a cattle of a thousand hills. Uh, it all belongs to him. Uh, oh, listen today. Uh, you are his work. Uh, his handiwork. Uh, you are wonderfully and fearfully made. And you do not go unnoticed by him. Oh, listen today. Sometimes we wonder. Uh, sometimes we question, maybe, where is God? Uh, how could this befall upon me? Uh, but don't you realize today, uh, He is. Uh, he is uh, the keeper of His sheep. Uh, he is the good shepherd. And the Bible said the good shepherd gives his life to the sheep. Oh, uh, listen, He is uh, the chief artificer. He is the great. Oh, uh, listen, the one that can work with his hands and form all things. He is the one that has spoke all things into existence. He is the one, as the Bible said, that formed man is in his own image. He is the one, as the Bible 
Bible said he hung the earth upon nothing. He is the one that named all the stars and set them in their place. Uh, he is the one that created all uh, things that creep up upon the earth. Uh, he is the one uh, that spoke you into existence. Uh, uh, that designed you and made you uh, exactly the way the Bible said after the first day. Uh, Brother Wilbur, he looked uh, and saw what he had made and it said it pleased him. Uh, the second day he looked and saw and it said it pleased him. Uh, the third day he looked and he saw what he had done and it pleased him. Uh, the fourth day he looked and saw what he had done and it pleased him. Uh, the fifth day he looked and saw what he had made truly and it pleased him. Uh, the sixth day did I skip one? Uh, the fifth and the sixth day he looked and saw and it pleased him. In other words he didn't say well Wait a minute, I didn't hardly do that right. Uh, I might have messed up just a little bit on that. Uh, no, he took and he looked and he examined what he had made and he saw it just exactly uh, the way he intended it to be. Uh, listen, that's who has designed and formed and made all things. Uh, the sixth day, he did no work. Uh, the Bible said he looked and he saw. Uh, I mean, the seventh day, he did no work. He looked and saw what he had created and all that he had done uh, there, and he rested on the seventh day. Uh, uh, listen today. Uh, you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, you have been created uh, by him and for him, for his honor and glory. And uh, a great work has been wrought. And I love how uh, Ruth, she said, We have wrought together. Uh, there, how she realized. Uh, there as she began to go out and uh, glean in the field, begin to work and try to uh, listen, uh, search out and bring home uh, their uh, provision. How that she realized uh, there that she was doing her part uh, and he was doing his. Uh, and that's the way it works with God uh, today. We do our part and he does his. Uh, he will never uh, leave us uh, without his part. He will always fulfill His promises uh, in our life and for us and make sure uh, that everything, uh, listen to His promise, will uh, come to pass and it will, we will be able to receive. And I also thought about uh, there the children of Israel when they was in uh, Egypt's bondage and how that, uh, the Bible uh, says that God uh, sent uh, uh, Moses in uh, to Pharaoh and tell him to let His people go and how Pharaoh uh, listen, refused to let uh, God's people go. They were in great bondage and uh, in, in, in great trouble uh, there and how that uh, uh, God began to send warnings in and how He began uh, to send the plagues. And the Bible said on that tenth plague, uh, the Bible said that God began to speak to Moses and He said, I'm going to uh, send one last plague and this plague was death. And, uh, how this death, listen, uh, God told Moses, He said, He will see what I have wrought uh, in you. Oh, listen today, I want you to know something. Uh, more than anything else, uh, the world needs to see what God has wrought in us. He needs to see the great work uh, that God has worked in us. Uh, God told Moses that day, He said, A Pharaoh and all of Egypt will see what I have wrought in you. He will see how I have made you. He will see why I have made you. Now listen, the world today needs to see why God has made us. He needs to see how God, they need to see how God has made us today. Uh, that it is a wonderful work of God. Uh, that it is something beyond measure and far beyond the skill of man. Uh, he said, I, He will see what I wrought in you. And He sent that tenth plague of death. <laughs> Oh, listen, it, uh, uh, it, it caused Pharaoh. Oh, listen, to him loose and let him go. Oh, the great work of God that has been wrought in us. I'm going to ask you today, is God having a hammer? Or is He working with fine hands and uh, gently and tenderly at all stages and ages in our lives? God works in different ways and uh, there that He might form us and make us. Uh, the way that He would have us to be. Let's stay and come with a song this morning if you would. Uh, I hope and pray. You know, uh, I look back and many times uh, as a child, I think, boy, I wish I had to put Mama 
I remember her chasing me around the old rector there in the yard one day. Uh, and I'd get, I got on one side and she's on the other. She'd start around through there and I'd just keep going around. She couldn't catch me. Uh, she was so uh, angry with me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, listen, I look back on that and it's a little funny today to think about it. Uh, uh, listen, I was uh, running with Mama. Uh, but you know, uh, listen, she wouldn't have been chasing me. If I didn't need chased, uh, listen, uh, she'd have caught me. Uh, she'd have hammered on me a little bit. Uh, why? Because I needed it. I, I don't even remember what I'd done. Uh, she didn't ever, uh, listen, hammer harder than she needed to hammer. Uh, but listen, I think about all the times, maybe, if I had it to do over again, uh, how uh, I tried to do a little better. Uh, but listen today. We're still, each and every one of us in here this morning, we're still going through life, aren't we? Aren't we? We're still under, oh, listen, the great love of God. Oh, we're still being worked on. I believe till the day we die now that God is still working on us. I, I love that song, He's still working on me. Oh, listen today. Oh, uh, uh, might we uh, surrender unto the Lord? Uh, might we be able to show, uh, uh, listen to a lost and a dying world? Oh, listen, who has made us, uh, formed us, of uh, the great work that has been wrought in us, uh, that we might provide just like these wrought iron rails uh, coming up the steps in the handicap ramp. Uh, they're also around the big retainer wall uh, down at the fellowship hall uh, where you won't fall off a uh, uh, high place and be heard uh, that we might be able to, to provide uh, a barrier of safety uh, for a lost and a dying world. Uh, the perfect work of God uh, that we might stand in the gap uh, uh, that we might fill that place uh, uh, between life and death uh, that we might be able uh, to be the raw work of God uh, to help somebody uh, to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ today I believe that's what the church uh, needs to be uh, is that raw work of God uh, that, that, that realm of, of safety and support uh, for those uh, that are in need. Uh, won't you stand and say it this morning? Well, this altar is open. If you need to come, won't you come this morning? And, uh, you know, when I was lost, just a young boy, I could feel the Lord. Uh, I could feel Him uh, knocking at my heart's door. I could tell that He was wanting uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, take uh, possession of me, uh, that He might uh, take me over and that He might begin to uh, make me what He would have me be. And you know what? I had a choice to try to uh, 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 try to fight against that or surrender unto Him and say, Here I am, Lord. <laughs> make me what you'd have me be. And you know, I've never regretted it. <laughs> never met anybody and never will that has regretted turning their self over to the Lord Amen. and surrendered to Him and saying, Lord, here I am. You have on me. Uh, you gently, uh, or you do what you would with me as you see fit. Uh, you know better than I know. Uh, you know myself better than I know myself. Uh, you have your uh, perfect will and way with me. And I pray that you would all be able to do that this day. Uh, just surrender to the Lord. Uh, listen and say, here I am, Lord. You make me what you'd have me be. Let's sing a verse of song. This altar is open if you need it this morning. Page 545.
what you feel you need to share this morning. Well, at least you've all got it. Oh, you've all got it. Huh? Huh? Don't look like me. Huh? Oh. So, huh? At least I'll send you out today having at least one thing to be thankful. So that, that, that's good. I'm, I'm good that. Anything else in any way? Y'all remember Jeff, he's having five weeks of chemo on pill and radiation at the same time. Every day for five weeks. So y'all remember him. Let's keep remembering him in prayer. Uh, keep remembering uh, Matt's stepmom, Millie McGrath. She is battling lung cancer, and I um, think it may be spreading, so y'all just pray for her. And her family. Any others? Can we sing that song? Do we have that? He's still working on me. Something I don't ever do after a man preaches. I don't. I don't like that. But a thought come to me, especially when you just said that just now. You look back in the Bible and God called an old prophet to go down. He said, Jeremiah, you come on down to the potter's house. He said, There, I'll speak to you. And then we went down. Uh, he said he arose and went down to the potter's house. And when he got there, he he, he saw the rock of the work on the wheel. And that work was on the wheel was clay that was in, that was marred in the potter's hand. Yeah, right. You know, uh, God didn't mar the clay. Clay gets marred by sin in our life. But the thing about it is, we're in the hands of the potter. Amen. He's still working on us today. We get out of force, we get marred by sin. We're still in His hands, our own wheel. He's still wrought. He's wrought there uh, on the work of the wheel. And that's you and I. We're just clay. And he can make us a vessel of honor or dishonor. But I just felt like I need to do that, especially you said. He's still working on us. See, we're still in the hands of the part. Amen. He breathed into us the breath of life, and we become a living soul. He didn't quit working on us then. Well, he's working on us today. He's walking with us today. You know, he's right with us every step we take. He went away, but he said, I'm going to send the comfort. Yeah. It walks with us every day. Amen. We just need to know that. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to hear you nothing, but I, I just want to, I just feel like saying that. Go down to Potter's house. He saw the, the rock of the work on the wheel. And he saw, he saw Jesus there with clay in his hand. It's been marred. He rocked and he worked on it and molded it back. God bless you, my brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Form in a vessel. You know, the Bible says there's vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. He's forming a vessel. He wants you to be a vessel of honor full of his spirit and his love. Y'all dug around over there. Y'all done good, didn't you? Yeah, we found it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I put you on the spot like that. Do we know it? Y'all know this song? Let's do the best we can do.
thankful for the love and God. the patience that God has shown me. Anybody else in any way? God. No, Scott, the, uh, the Lord works in mysterious ways. I mean, Bless. even when I was just uh, having breakfast this morning and I was going through Twitter, mm -hmm. social media, and one of the people I follow uh, posted uh, that the same God that made the moon and the stars God. and the earth God. Is the same God that made God. the moon. And then he preached on this, so he... Um, he had a message for me today, and I heard it twice. <laughs> but I've also heard that the reason we're all so different is we all display a facet of our of our God. Um, that's how wonderful He is. That all of the different people that's ever been born of this world, each one of us shows a different uh, characteristic of our God. Thank you so much. Anybody else? If not, we'll remind you about the visit we're going to make right after church. All that's going to go down to the lady's house that lost her husband. She has two children, a daughter and a son. One of them, a son, has special needs. Is that right? Just two children? Yes. And uh, they have uh, been to Bible school here before. But, uh, we're just going to do, a, I think, maybe like a front yard visit and uh, give her the money that the church has raised for and, and uh, then have prayer with her. So anybody who wants to be a part of that. Nothing else in any way. Let's lift her hands and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.